Sure. There we go. All right, welcome everybody. This is uh, our hockey roundtable here on MSO New Sports. I'm Rick Moore, along with uh, some coaches that are very familiar to those of us on the North Shore. We have uh, Winthrop's Dale Dunbar. We have Linfield's John Gardner, Gloucester's Derek Geary, and Maskinomics Andrew Jackson is here with us. And coaches, thank you very much for being with us. Um, I know that um, you haven't had a lot of uh, a lot of time to think about stuff, but I got I want to congratulate all of you on a fantastic hockey season for us fans here on the North Shore. Um, you guys did such a great job. Your kids did, considering all the circumstances. And then the other thing is. You all played one another across leagues, and I, I want to talk a little bit about that as well. And all those games were fantastic games against each other. The coach, uh, Coach Dale Dunbar, Winthrop, very familiar to us here, of course, at MSO, and uh, um, Winthrop, an arch rival of Gloucester's over the years in all sports. Coach, you had um, a, an up and down season, but very competitive, and then you went and played well in the tournament. Tell me a little bit about your season, and then maybe how you see the league and how you see high school hockey here on the North Shore? Because with you four coaches, I'm just looking at fantastic competition. Yeah, obviously the rivalry with, with Glosser has, has been a storied one. It's been great all the way back before I started playing high school hockey. So to have that Northeast Conference rivalry still going is, is special. You know, the old Lynn Arena was always a great venue to, to go watch all the teams on the North Shore. Um, but just to be able to you know, to have that intact is really special. And, you know, I saw uh, having home games this year in the playoffs was tremendous because I saw a video of Gloss's rink, which is, I think, one of the toughest to play and just absolutely packed. Um, but, yeah, it was, a, you know, we did have an up-and-down season. Um, you know, we I, I thought we started off slow, but then we got into a, a stretch where we really started to play good hockey. Uh, we started to to piece it together with goaltending and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it, it started off slow. It wasn't the way we wanted it to go, but um, we were able to, you know, to make the playoffs and uh, get a couple of games in. Uh, it ended disappointingly. Uh, I thought we played, you know, we all played. Uh, Shawshin just didn't get the bounces we needed. And Derek, maybe you could uh, tie into that because, uh, you know, I started with, with the Gloucester Winthrop rivalry, but there's a rivalry among, among all four of uh, your schools. And your season, uh, Coach, uh, you kind of, you and, and, and uh, Linfield, Gloucester and Linfield, went deepest into the tournament, um, but everybody ranked highly. Uh, tell me a little bit about how, uh, the tournament maybe and, and maybe, um, you know, your relationship, your school's relationships against these other schools. Um. Well, uh, first of all, great to be on this panel with such uh, amazing coaches. Thanks for organizing this. Um, yeah, I mean, Winthrop is in, in Gloucester. That's the, uh, you know, the longtime NEC um, rivals uh, here. Um, and I just love the uh, rivalry in the best sense of the term and, and the history and the community when you're playing high, public high school hockey. And we got that in the tournament, as, as you alluded to. Um, the crowd was just amazing uh, in Gloucester. So to me, um, anytime you can kind of get communities, schools behind your sport and your program, that's really exciting. So we, I think it's wonderful that we continue these traditions and, and also build new rivalries, if that's the right word. Um, you know, we've been playing Linfield a couple times a year, which has been amazing. Uh, and Maskinamit is, you know, arguably the team to beat in the NEC. Uh, certainly from Gloucester's point of view uh, this year <laughs> uh, and in the, in the previous years. So uh, I, I think that's, I think it's wonderful. I'm going to hold off on. on yeah, John, Go ahead, Dale. No, I was just going to say, yeah, I, you know, I, I sort of just alluded, but uh, to to um, Glosser, but yeah, the rivalry, you know, we've been playing, we've had battles with Linfield in the playoffs um, in regular season. John, his brother, always great coach teams and Masco, like uh, Derek said, is, is the barometer. You know, we had, we've had some good battles with them as well. So yeah, I, I think uh, like Derek said, anytime, it, it, it's fun to see, the student body behind you, the community behind you. Our rink was packed as well. Um, and I and I hope 
I hope having these home games will will rekindle that during the regular season because it's it's a it's a great it's a great venue. You know, it's a great these rinks are, are so storied, some of us, and and it's nice to have everybody there again and watching and, and enthused about the game because. You know, all the other outside factors have sort of robbed that from us and robbed it from the kids. And um, so, yeah, having having these these battles with these uh, teams and coaches, hopefully we can do it on a regular basis with Linfield as well. Um, but, yeah, it, 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 it was great. It was great. And uh, it's something to really look forward to. John, you want to pick up on that? Because you've had a relationship with the Cape Ann League and the Northeastern Conference, as has Andrew. Yeah, I mean, it, it dates back to um, when I was playing at Linfield. We used to always play Gloucester. Our coach, Drew Taylor, uh, got that kind of relationship going. And we, we looked to extend that our first year out of the gate. Um, we had to wait a year, but then we immediately went with that. Obviously, we've, we've played Winthrop right from our first year, like Dale mentioned, um, in the tournament, in Christmas tournaments, um, like home and homes. Um, so we made sure we got that back on track this year. And then obviously AJ being at um, Masco, being in the Cape Bandley, we've had a ton of a ton of battles um, over the past ten years. To to echo what these guys said, it was it was crazy actually when I saw it on in, in the fine print of like you'll host a home game if you're a higher scene. It just it it didn't kind of register until we we hosted a couple. And I had alumni from all over the country, all over um, you know decades past saying wow what did you guys do to get to host a uh, to get a, a hosted uh, home game for the tournament so it, it was definitely um unique this year and uh, hopefully we can, can keep going with that andrew yeah i mean our our home rink is a little uh different <laughs> it's not that uh you know comforting for us uh, at times but uh you know it's out in haverhill we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere um, and I know we, you know, we played Winthrop and Gloucester at Essex, so we didn't really have a consistent home, but, uh, in the tournament, I, I it definitely helped. Um, even though our second game, I swear half of Quincy came, you know, they had way, we were way over capacity, but it was bumping. It was awesome. Um, and I can't imagine you know, what Larson was like in that barn with a home, like, oh, it's gotta be awesome. And the videos are Gloucester. I mean, you know, even it was on spit and chicklets like that. I mean, it, yeah. or it was in between periods, I think, in one of the NHL games. It's, it's just amazing, the following. And um, like Dale said, you know, I hope this really rekindles it and you know, really is a resounding, you know, excitement bringing people back, you know, because last year stunk. <laughs> last year. Yeah. Stunk. That's... I, I, think it's I was going to ask you guys what, what maybe, uh, um, a, a difficulty, a difficulty that you had to overcome this year, aside from COVID, because uh, you guys all had such success. But but before I do that, I want to ask you about the games you had against one another, because um, I don't know if the, if if those games were, you know, um, the game of the year for you guys. But as a fan, knowing all of you, watching these and seeing the results, every one of those games came down to the wire for the most part. Every now and then it'd be a one or two goal difference. Hold on, let me answer that. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. And, and let's start no with Coach Jackson. Would you uh, just kind of respond to the to the to the games that you had? Maybe highlight games or or you know this cross the schedule, I guess, because this was a whole new uh, a whole new setup with the strength of schedule. Right. Well, well I'll start off as I, I usually like to forget the games when we go down to Larson. They spanked us out there pretty good. Enjoy um, the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, yeah, oh, my gosh. Gloss, I mean, Winthrop, every time we play, and we know it's going to be a defensive battle. And Gloucester, two overtime games this year. It's just, I mean, it was, you know, obviously we came out on the, the, the right end, but – uh, you know, Gloucester ended the season ahead of us. So, you know, it just shows how even in, in, in there's a lot of puck luck that comes into winning. And especially when teams are so close, um, John, you know, we tied this year one to one. I thought you guys probably should have won the game. You know, um, you probably did, too. <laughs> but I, it, it was fun just following all our teams this year because it, it was it was a good mix of talent, grit, goaltending, obviously excellent coaching. And, you know, I, I hope it, you know, 
put a little bit more of a spotlight on the North Shore and North Shore hockey because we've got some good teams and good coaches up here. Really I do. think so. Yeah. And John, you, you get to know one of those players too, I'm sure, when you play these games like this. Yeah, I mean, it was nice this year to know that once we got done playing the three opponents, I wouldn't have to see them again being in different tournaments. So that that was awesome. Um, we had a, a great, great game with all three teams. Um, the last game against Gloucester was perfect. Just what you want before the tournament, an overtime game. Um, with AJ, I mentioned a 1-1 game at our rink, which was just up and down. Uh, we hit the crossbar at the buzzer. Um and then and at Winthrop, it was back and forth. It was like a specialty teams uh, session. They had a, they had three power play goals and we had three power play goals. So it was back and forth with that one too. But um, always looking to schedule tough, especially now with the strength of schedule. And I try and uh, cultivate those relationships and going up against these guys and these teams only makes your team better. So we're, we're looking to kind of keep it, keep it the same. Derek? Yeah, I mean... Tremendous, tremendous games. Um, yeah, Dale gets a lot of credit for um, the defensive aspect, but rightly so. But he, the winter power play was arguably the best power play around towards the end of the year. Um, so um, I wasn't at the first game with winter. Actually, speaking of COVID, we uh, that was a, a tough thing to, to deal with. Um, but they manhandled us, um, there and then, uh, Andrew, yeah, we had some heartbreaking, amazing games against Maskinomit, but, um, uh, we're, we're not able to, uh, close the deal on overtime credit to them and Linfield, uh, I thought one of the best teams we played, forget the fact that they were division three, whatever that means. Um, and we were lucky to, um, serve, serve, you know, win, win those games as well. So high high quality teams high quality games amazing well, well dale you your team yeah dale, you went away i can i can hear you see you what's that there also. you go all right you're back no i it, uh, eric just mentioned the divisions and uh you know winthrop is in division four but i think when i talked to all you guys and when i did you you sort of threw that out the window because you played across leagues and and uh it, it, it's kind of weird the way it's set up by divisions, I guess. Well, it, it's it's so you know rewarding being able to have such strong competition within your own division. Um, before we went to four, we you know we always try to schedule division one teams to play so our kids weren't overwhelmed once we got into the playoffs. You know, facing bigger cities and towns. So, you know, having having these three opponents right here, being able to play them you know, it's like playoff hockey already. So you're not going to, and we used to tell our kids, you're not going to, we, we have to play like we're playing Masco and, and Glossa right now, because, you know, those are the teams we're more familiar with. You know, John, John obviously uh, has a great team and that was great to get on the schedule. I hope it keeps going, but to be able to split with the, uh, you know, Glossa and Masco, it gives you confidence because you know what you're getting. It's going to be a war. And, um, you know, obviously very well coached um, right down to the end. Uh, and, you know, Gloucester for me is, is the toughest, toughest place to play. Um, and I wasn't able to coach there. I, I missed uh, quite a few games with the COVID. Um, but it was, um, it was amazing. Uh, I watched the game on streaming and um, it was the third period where we we made a move in that and that's sort of what we've been talking about sort of changed our season a little bit um they they we seem to string a third period together where we played hard and from that point on you know we use that as our uh you know as our springboard and we always allude to those two teams i don't care who we're playing just look like you're playing gloucester and and masco because you know again you're not going to face anybody better and uh, it's great to be able to have that within our conference and know we circle that obviously on, on the schedule. It's going to be a battle and it's, uh, it's, it's really going to tell you a lot about your own team. I have a general question. <clears throat> um, I, I heard, uh, I think it was um, Coach Hanson, uh, Christian Hanson, talking about all the text messages he got and all the visitors he got from alumni and so on. Um, and, and this question, um, 
it's sort of an answer already, but I, I want to be careful when I ask it. The, the value or lack of value of, uh, of, of your kids playing multiple sports, because, um, you know, uh, none of your schools, perhaps Mesco is an exception, but, they, you know, you don't have giant schools. Um, so the, the, is it, what is your opinion of, of kids playing multiple sports in high school? And, and we'll start with, with John. Yeah, we're, we're um, big into not being so sports specific and just having hockey turn into like a job. I'm going to go shoot pucks. I'm going to go lift in the, in the weight room specifically for hockey. Our, our coach, when we were at Linfield, would always tell us to go put your bag in the basement or the garage for at least three months, um, play different sports, you know, um, put yourself in different, different situations and it'll only help you um, even if it's a different, uh, totally different, unique sport. Uh, you don't want to have that burnout factor. You want the kids love coming to the rink. And, and I know the guys that do do it year round, it, it's, they still love it, but it's just, you run that risk of kids getting burnt out. So I think it's a very important Linfield small school. Uh, I was a three sport athlete, you know, you kind of, you know, mixed and matched and, 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 and did everything. So I think that's, that's only um, a positive experience for the kids. Andrew. Yeah. I mean, I think, John alluded to it too, like using different muscles, um, you know, hockey muscles are different and they need a break every once in a while. And I think it's good for the kids to interact with other teams, other coaching styles, other teammates. And yeah, I mean, we have a bunch of kids that are playing lacrosse this spring and baseball. I'm like, Oh, good. Like go play. And then whenever a kid's teetering on like, Oh, I might, you know, I might play in this spring uh, showcase league. I'm trying to, I, I was just talking to a player the other day. I'm, I'm between that and, you know, playing lacrosse. And I'm saying, brother, you are never going to be able to play high school sport again. Like, you are never going to be able to play lacrosse again with your buddies. I go, go play lacrosse. Like, go have fun with that. You know, don't do the showcase. Um, go play with them and have a blast because it goes by in a blink. And, uh, you know, we all saw it in our locker rooms this year that at the, the very – end of some like great great senior careers and it's just like you don't get this time back and no matter what we say to encourage them with that so, you know sometimes you know there's so much pressure now with special specialization but um you know if we can even help a couple kids just make that ex high school experience better i think it's totally worth it well, derek i think i already know your answer where you're coaching tennis yeah absolutely i uh... I think, um, you know, there's so many factors um, that you can't really draw up that make hockey players better, that make athletes better. Dealing with uh, emotion, dealing with adversity, um, dealing with, I don't know, just things that, that aren't going to show up in hockey specific, just sports specific. So I think the more people you get a chance to learn from, the better, like, like, Andrew just said, maybe, you know, you learn from your peers, learn from your teammates, you learn from your, a different coach, different voice in your head. Uh, all those things make better athlete. And I think that um, hockey could, could use better athletes. You know, we all want better athletes and, and, you know, being an athlete is not just being able to cross over on skates, you know, it's, it's how to handle, uh, as I say, other other athletic moments, mental toughness, whatever it is that that you're you're going to learn from just being an athlete. So I I strongly am in favor of uh, multiple sports. I also uh, yeah. it's, it's, uh, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say you you talk about other voices in your head. I've got all kinds of voices in my head, but but we're not going to go there. But uh, <laughs> that question to you now, multi sport athletes. Yeah, I, I just everybody's bang on uh, like AJ was saying. So I, I mean, you have, you have that cross pollination of, of, of coaching, training, um, so developing different muscles. I, I I'm sure I'm the oldest coach on this panel. Um, and the, the landscape of hockey has just changed dramatically since I was in high school. I mean, I was a three sport athlete and the best two best coaches I ever had, um, was my high school football coach, Bob D Felice and, Jack Parker at BU and both were, you know, disciplinarians, both were, you know, hardcore. Um, but I, 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 I learned a lot in football. I learned a lot in baseball. I learned, you know, that progressive thinking. Um, 
you know, uh, we used to, I've been on a lot of round tables about this. And, you know, when I worked for, for the Orr agency, we, we did a round table and Orr was saying, I never even played summer hockey. He said, I played baseball, I fished, I did everything. So if you're going to be an athlete, I mean, a lot of that's ingrained in you and how you think and how you perceive things. The training will come, but I don't like seeing kids play this sport year round, thinking they're going to gain less is more for me. Uh, these showcases are money makers are a joke. I lost a kid for a whole year last summer. He got hurt near the end of the season. He was out for our whole season. So these money makers for me are just, uh, you know, people are drinking the Kool-Aid out there. And, and uh, it, it's a shame because they're robbing our towns of high school kids that should be staying in their own town and playing for their town and enjoying their experience. Cause you know, a lot of them aren't going to play D1 or even, even beyond. So enjoy your experience. Okay, gentlemen, I've taken up a lot of your time and boy, I, I could do this forever uh, and I appreciate it. I have one final question or, or comment or, or suggestion. I'd like you, if you would, please, as we close this out to, to brag about your team, this year's team and um, maybe the culture of it because um, kids did come back, alumni did come back. You, you had um, a tremendous followings, uh, your student body wise and so on. So maybe just a final thought on, on this year's team and, and anybody that you want to point out or not point out. And uh, again, we'll start in my left-hand corner here with John. Yeah, we, we, um, we were chomping at the bit, obviously, as guys talked about last year's season, just not being the same. So um, we had very, very ambitious goals this year. And um, for us to get to uh, the year before we got to Linfield, Vinny had some juggernaut teams and, some of the records that he put up, I just figured we're never, ever going to be able to duplicate that. And for these guys to get 19 wins, uh, keep the loss total down, uh, two of which obviously to a, a team like Gloucester, um, just just proud of our guys. First Cape Band League championship in, in 16, 17 years. Um, and again, we were, we, were, we were in it. We were one game away from going to the Garden, which was, you know, the, the, the big goal. But very proud of that leadership group. Um, you know, again, they, they, uh, they stuck together. I think one of the intangibles that you, you want for a team to have is their competitiveness and their, their camaraderie. And my, my guys had that this year. Um, and again, we've talked about the opponents and the other players and coaches we go against it. It only helps when you play teams like, like Winthrop Masco and, uh, and Gloucester. So just, uh, sad it's over. So I was glad to, uh, to, to welcome, welcome the, you know, join this call. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Let's go to Maskinoman. Um, yeah, I mean, first of all, we had 10 seniors, pretty special group. Um, we're part of a lot of wins. Um, I just was trying to think of some of their accolades off the, the top of my head. But I mean, they had, you know, last year was kind of funky. I feel like we were co-champs with Winthrop, but I mean, you know, this group won four league titles, which is something, you know, Masco has never really done before. So it's a tribute to the the leadership group in the locker room and the kids. I mean, some, we had some kids that just absolutely transformed their bodies from when they were freshmen to when they were a senior. And, uh, you know, if, you know, winning's a byproduct of all the other things you do that, you know, when nobody's looking. And so I think a lot of that goes to our guys, you know, just buying into what we're selling and just really focusing in on off season stuff is we only get them for three months every year and you know can't really work too much with them in the off season so I just want to commend them on just really putting in tremendous effort and you know once again you know you don't know how you're going to replace it year after year but hopefully we can you know we had a good JV team and uh, yeah I, it's it's going to be tough and I know we're going to be losing a couple of kids to preps and that's fine sometimes you know when you're a big fish you know you should go but um yeah, no, I just, it was a fun ride. And again, just like John said, like, I think we outplayed Duxbury in, in every facet of the game and outshot them, outchanced them, and just didn't get that bounce. So I feel bad for the boys ending that way, but it was good because they ended that way too. It wasn't a clunker. It wasn't, you know, uh, what we could have done. They, they gave everything they had. So Awesome. Well, you brought up a, a couple of topics I'm going to talk to you guys about individually next year, I think. But uh, Derek, what about your guys? Um, yeah, it did, the season was amazing. It, it didn't end the way we wanted. I mean, I'm 
still trying to process what the heck happened against Canton, um, but that's sports, and uh, we certainly credit Canton. They they were they were certainly better than us. Uh, there was no uh, denying that on that on that game. Um, but as a season, I thought it was our best that since I've been coach the five years in terms of um, guys kind of buying into the culture, buying into the expectations of um, hard work and commitment and, and also the little things that make teammates better, you know, the camaraderie and making practice better, um, unselfish play, becoming a leader. Um, so I thought that was all positive. And as Andrew just said, I think those things behind the scenes lead to results you know the process being so much more important than the the wins per se thank you uh, sir and finally oh i'm sorry derek you continue please oh um i don't know i mean i'm, I'm kind of rambling but i mean there's there's you know obviously costanzo is a is a huge loss for us um and and um he was a kid that really <laughs> bought into the culture eventually and matured and, and became uh, such a uh, important guy for us. And by the way, one of the reasons he stayed in Gloucester, I think, was he wanted to play golf. And he had an opportunity in a public okay. high school to play golf that he wasn't gonna get at a prep school. So small footnote to uh, helping kids stay in public school. There you go, love it. Dale. Please tell me that. Please tell me he doesn't have a younger brother or a cousin because I've been dealing with Costanzo for eight years. Yes, we, we, we've been hiding him. He's actually uh, making his debut next year. No, I was. I, I was just going to say I am not going to miss him at all. <laughs> that, he, he can single-handedly just bring control a game. He just controls it. He, he can set the tempo. I mean, he he was special. He was special. Um, for me. You know, uh, having the locker room back this year, obviously, rather than 25 folding chairs in the back of our rink, freezing every day with checklists, um, really made this year special. The kids really love the locker room. And I tell them, you'll never get this. Some of you, you'll never get this experience again. It's a, it's a special bond you create. You can, you know, if, if you're able to win championships, whatever, you, you know, you walk together forever. You'll see it. You're your uh, years up on a banner, your pictures in the trophy case, what have you. So this year was great. I, I had one of the best captains I've ever had uh, in Joe Hayes, just a competitor. But a lot of my, uh, a lot of my players, my, my players are really factored in. They're all, they're sophomores, juniors, and even a couple of freshmen. So that's going to be exciting to, uh, to come back to, um, you know, knowing that you have some, some young kids you can mold and I think one of the beauties for me is our exit meetings. Um, to see your seniors, we, we, we try to promise them we're going to make, you know, men out of boys. And uh, four of my seniors were our stick boys growing up, you know, coming wow. into the. Wow. So that's rewarding, you know, to, to have your exit meeting. Finally, you know, uh, you know, tell a kid how he was over his four years and how he grew and and what needs to be done in the future and going out in the real world. So it's those coaching moments that aren't necessarily on the ice, but off the ice that, that for me is, is still pretty special in the whole scheme of things.